Welcome, ladies, gents, and marsupials to our show. I know my audience. We got koalas and kangaroos. Second string. We're like that kid sitting on the end of the bench making tallies for every rebound Jimmy Jackson gets during the game. If he doesn't have a double-double by the end, Coach Bob and Jimmy's dad will guilt you into thinking you made a mistake, forcing you to make another pencil mark before turning in Jimmy's stats to the local newspaper. Oh, wow, 10 rebounds again? Jimmy's having an all-state type season, Coach. It's amazing how he averages 10.0 rebounds a game, right on the dot like that. Then, Coach Bob invites you into his office after the game for a late-night film session to see what you can improve upon. But, Coach, I never got in a game. You didn't even let me dress out. Shut up, Taylor! Anyway, this is Second String, and this is our second show. Thanks for coming back. Let's talk about sports. Well, this Saturday marks the second game for LSU after opening their season last week with a win over Mississippi State. It's also their second try at their home opener. Fans are excited, except there's one problem. It's a 2.30 kickoff, which means it's a day game. A day game in Tiger Stadium? No, this cannot happen. This cannot be. Somebody tell me, he's joking. I'm not. A day game in Tiger Stadium is kind of like Mitch Ravelli listening to NWA. It just doesn't seem right. But once a year, LSU fans have to deal with at least one day game. Due to a contract the SEC has with CBS. Don't think this is a big deal? Athletic Director Joe Oliva even sent out a letter to LSU fans apologizing for the early Saturday start. Quote, a quick reminder that playing a day game at home in September is not something we choose to do. Unfortunately, we are bound by the Southeastern Conference to move at least one game a year to the 2.30 p.m. slot, if requested by CBS. As you know, all seven of our home games last season were played at night. By the way, last Sunday, opening day, LSU led the NFL with players on rosters with 40. By the way, that means plenty of action for former Tigers. By the way, it's play on play time. Roll it, please. We're going to start off with number five, and look at that, it's Jeremy Hill, but there's another player, Andrew Whitworth, the offensive guard, pushing the pile, two LSU Tigers on one play. Number four, who is that again? Oh, it's the Giants. It's got to be Odell Beckham Jr. with a nice catch deep down in the red zone, and it's a first down. That's a tough catch from number 13. Number three, we're going to go back to the Bengals, and it's back to Jeremy Hill, busting it outside on a fourth down scoring the touchdowns on that baseball slash football field, and he's doing his little dance. He's got it. He's got the moves. Watch him. Watch him whip. Watch him nay-nay. Number two, this is late in the game, Seattle and the Rams. And check out Michael Brockers, defensive tackle for St. Louis, getting in on this play, stopping Marshawn Lynch. This won them the game in overtime. Number one, and I'm sure you guys saw this one, man. This, this is that little kid I from Miami. Number 14, Jukin taking it to the house on the punt return, and that was the go-ahead touchdown. Ended up being the game winner for Miami. Check out these moves from the Juice Man. Ooh, sorry, punter. Not today. And Speedy Gonzalez takes it to the house. That's Jarvis Landry, the Juice Man. While you're watching former Tigers in the NFL this weekend, don't forget to set your fantasy lineups, and be sure to check out Fantasy Kings. Football is worthless without Fantasy Kings. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsor. The first time I played Fantasy Kings, I was hooked, man. I was excited. Fantasy football is finally here. And Fantasy Kings one-week leagues are paying out over $4 billion. On Fantasy Kings, I've won over $200,000. More money and more winners than any other fantasy site out there. Fantasy Kings is the ultimate in competition. The first time I won in Fantasy Kings, it was like hitting a home run. 
It's easy. Just sign up, pick a league, make a team, give us your mailing address, bank account number, social security, SAT score, your old IN screen name, and answer some security questions such as, what's your pet's name? What's your favorite book? What brand of underwear do you wear? With Fantasy King, there's no season-long commitment. And that's perfect for me, because I hate commitment. Me and my girlfriend have been dating for eight years. She wants to get married, but I'm not ready yet. We'll match your first deposit up to $20. Go to fantasykings.com and enter promo code BALLSACK21. After my wife left me, I was really lost. But then I found myself with Fantasy Kings. Be football royalty with Fantasy Kings. Try it today. And Dallas is down just three. Still in it. My buddy, yeah, my buddy. Star. Wherever I go, he's I stick with, with me. Welcome back to the show. We are now joined by Brian Pellerin, and we're going to preview this weekend's game. I tell you what, Brian, you you are looking flashy today. You look like you're ready for Saturday. It's, uh, God, it's good attire. You Thank you, sir. It is my uh, Gus Malzahn outfit. Do you like it? Oh, wow. Gus Malzahn, but with, with maybe a LSU in inspiration. What are you talking about? Well, my good friend Gus is uh, quite the dresser. He is an aficionado of the sweater vest, if you will, oh, made famous by the... Jim Tressel, the one and only Jim Tressel from the oh, Ohio State, State University. Yes. So, once again, because I'm the buzzfeed of the show, list time. List. That's right. Good old Saban from Northwest Alabama. Ooh, oh, yeah. bad guy. Look at this practice outfit. No sharpness. No classiness. He's got the nice hat, though. A floppy hat. Old ladies wear floppy hats. Yeah. Shame, Saban. Next on the list. Bo Pelini. Talk about disappointments. Woo, Nebraska. Well, now he's at Youngstown State. You know who's a sharp dresser at Youngstown State? Jim Tressel. He's got the yes. nice hoodie. Sweater oh, vest. what is that? Bo Pelini? Sweaters. Follow Bo Pelini. Hilarious account. Do it. Do it. Al Golden. Funny guy. Sharp dresser. Very sharp. The problem is, what happens when Al Golden gets a little sweaty? That's right. <laughs> Al Golden white looks like that. That is not professional, nor does it look very good. You know what would hold in that tie and make it look very professional? A sweater vest. Number two, Jim Harbaugh. He loves his khakis or dockers, yeah, he's a whatever classic brand dresser. it is that he buys. He's like the State Farm guy. I like the Sharpie less funny. Hanging. Number one, my favorite best friend, Gus Malzahn. Sweater vests, many different forms, gray. Orange. Blue. It's a classic. Gray look. again. Gus is the king of the sweater vest. No one has worn such a beautiful sweater vest in all of college football besides Jim Tressel. Here are his record with each sweater vest. 5 and 0 oh in the bottom corner. And here are those sweet dance moves before what? he put on the sweater vest. What? Yes, that's on? right. There was a time when Gus did not wear a sweater vest and he had way less rhythm. <laughs> Poor Gus. He is I'd, wearing jorts. So, hey, Florida. I you think he's a got coach? the moves, man. This could be your guy. Call 1985 Gus Malzahn. Oh, we're back on, Brian. Yes, sir, uh, we are. Oh, he's uh, just doing his best Gus Malzahn for impression? Yes, sir. I love me some Gus Malzahn dance he's moves. He's got the moves, man. I'm waiting for Les Miles to, you know, do the whip or something. Maybe a little, yeah. a little, a little uh, something like that. Little anyway, the nene, the nene. A little Bernie. Well, coaches lead the teams, but mascots lead the crowd. They sure do. Pumping them up. And this weekend, we have a matchup of two Tiger mascots. And oddly enough, the Tiger nickname ranks third in the most common mascot nicknames in college sports. So I'm, I have a list for you myself, Brian, and it's the top 15 tiger mascots number 15 clemson gosh that guy is creepy he's got those eyes staring into your soul what is he doing at your wedding get out Just don't touch that kid get away the clemson tiger is really creepy number 14 is east central rory the tiger east central university he's got human hands that doesn't seem right number 13 is the fort hayes victor e tiger they did kind of a little on words he's like there. a Lion he, King character. He, yeah, he doesn't really, he's enjoying coffee though. He's a sophisticated guy. Uh, number 12 is the Colorado College Prowler. He's a cool dude. He's, why is he holding a child? He's hanging out with grandma there. He's about the people. He's a nice guy. Super nice guy. Memphis is number 11. And he doesn't even, he looks like a bear, Brian. 
He doesn't yeah. even look like a tiger. His head looks oversized. Number 10 is, of course, Missouri, and it's Truman the Tiger. He looks kind of strange, too. He looks like he was born the same year as Harry Truman, like 1912. Look, he's riding a tiger. Lord. What, what, in, what is he doing there? All right, number nine is Auburn, Aubby the Tiger. He always looks like a cartoon to me, Brian. Yeah, Aubby is a, like a nine-time national champion mascot, so he's got something going right. University of Pacific, the power cat, they call him. Looks they like, really just mean tiger. Looks like Zeus. Jackson State. He's a man of the people, hanging out. People like him. What is he wearing? He looks like he's going to a clown convention. That's a creepy looking face. He looks disappointed there. But let's go with uh, Princeton. That's a classic tiger. He's been around since the early 1800s. He, but he looks pretty creepy these days. Looks like he could use some updating. That's an old version of him. He looks very sad. And there he, another. They More always babies. hold babies. People, people love giving their babies. Stop to giving you babies. This is Texas Southern's tiger. He just looks like a jolly old uncle. You know, he'd hang out with. I could have a beer with the with jolly old bumble. And this is Grambling. Look, Grambling State guy's doing flips, man. And that's their statue. It looks I like, like statues. This is number two. This is actually a cool tiger. This is Towson's tiger. They that, actually, it looks kind of like the cheetah from Cheetos, yeah, but he's still cool. <laughs> that's a big face, man. He's got a big face. And number two, Rochester Institute of Technology. This guy, he, they call him Richie. He's playing, playing a, banjo. a banjo. You can't beat that. Ding, 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 ding. That's why he's number two. They actually had a live tiger at one point, too. Oh, that's a but shame. no one rivals number one, and he actually wears the jersey number one. Fitting as it is. Of course, you know him as Mike the Tiger, crowd surfing. And let's not forget, LSU is the only school that has a live tiger on its campus. Here he was inducted into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, here comes the two or three cars of the O'Neill party, and you expect Shaq to get out of the driver's side. Shaq's driving the lead car, you know, I mean. So he gets out of the car, and everybody's all excited. And So they're coming right toward our platform. Our camera people are all set. We're ready to go. I said, just roll the cameras and let's see what happens. Well, Shaq stops and goes, where do I go? I go, well, you're going over here, but right now I'm going to ask you a question, you know. <laughs> and and I hear I hear his, his the the lady his PR lady behind him going, this was your SID in college, and Jack turns around, I know I know who it is, <laughs> but I mean you know, he understands what how important Louisiana is. He understands how important Baton Rouge is. It's what he does, you know. It's He's here for the first SEC games. He holds this golf tournament to benefit the, the life skills program. He gets it. Shaq, man, you can never get enough of him. He'll be at the game against Auburn on Saturday. I Check hope Chuck's out. there, too. I, that would be nice. Two SEC folks, two uh, former players, that would be good. But anyway, uh, it should be a great night against Auburn on Saturday. Uh, Afternoon. But, you know, I'm all about having fun, too, Brian. You know, I'm a fun-going guy. I, I mean, think so, too. Yeah. So I, I wanted to check out, go out on the town, and see what it really is like to spend a Saturday night in Baton Rouge. So I'm going to leave you guys with that, and you all have a great weekend. It's Saturday night in Baton Rouge, baby, and I'm ready to have a hell of a time. I'm ready to go out. 225. I'm going to see what this city has to offer. We actually are closed on game days. Oh. Um, it's kind of like our campus holiday. So. Why is, why is that? I mean, people need to study. Well, <laughs> people, a majority of people we would expect to go to the game. So. so is it safe to say that LSU cares more about football than academics? I don't know about that. However, we clearly have directed all of our attention to Tiger Stadium for okay. Saturday. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I guess I'll try the public library downtown. Okay. Okay. Saturday in Baton Rouge. Nothing better than do on a weekend and a little bit of Saturday shopping. Let's go to the mall. Might be packed though. Always empty on Saturday. Why? Why is that? You think? Cause it's game day. I'm gonna get me some fun.
wish I had a friend or a partner to do it with, but I'm riding solo tonight, baby, and we're going ham. Ham is an acronym for hard as a We in the red light district now, bro. I haven't been here this long. I already named a building. It's crazy. Well, I guess the only place to be on Saturday in Baton Rouge is Tiger Stadium. I guess that's not the worst place to be in the world. My buddy, my buddy, star. Wherever I go, he's coming with me. You're right.